So I'm deeply interested in the IV relationship of my JFET device. So I understand, I have some basic understanding of how it works. But what I'm interested in now in this video is that if I apply a gate voltage on this uh, JFET device, or if I apply a drain voltage, then how does my current in the device changes as a function of these applied drain and gate voltage. That's what I want to find out in this video. So I'll, I've done some initial labeling over here. I've assumed that this axis is my Y axis and this axis is my X axis. And then the axis which is going into the plane of the screen that you're watching the video on, that's a Z axis. And I'll assume that I have a width of capital Z in uh, in the Z direction. And then I'll also use, you know, some basic assumptions, which are, you know, very reasonable and uh, very fair assumptions. I'll assume that my device in the P region, it has a constant doping. So I'll assume a doping of NA, which is a constant in my in my P region, then I'll assume that my device, it's symmetric about the center. So if I draw a line which cuts this device at the center of the channel, it's symmetric about, you know, about the center. So I'll assume that my device is symmetric with respect to, with respect to center in the X direction. Okay, and then I'll use a very, very important uh, assumption that we also use for a MOSFET and that's called a gradual channel approximation, uh, GCA. And what it says is that, it says that my, your length of your device, your length of your device is much, much larger than, much, much larger than this dimension along the X direction. That is, this is much larger than A. L is much larger than A. And what it simplifies, uh, you know, what it helps us in doing, it helps us in separating this uh, Poisson equation and the continuity equation. So what we can assume that inside the depletion region, so inside the depletion region, you can simply as apply Poisson uh, equation and you can assume that your electric field in the x direction, in the x direction is much higher than the electric field in the y direction. So inside the depletion region, you can assume that your Ex is much larger than your uh, Ey and you can simply write down your Poisson equation assuming it's a 1D device. Outside the depletion region, however, outside the depletion region, however, you assume that your current conduction is just given by the electric field in this direction. So outside the depletion region, you'll assume that Ey is much, much greater than Ex. So it helps us in you know, separating our Poisson equation from the continuity equation. And uh, what we can write as a result of making this uh, gradual channel approximation, we could have written this by, you know, just by using uh, simple intuition as well. But it's, you know, it's, it's good to state that we're making this uh, gradual channel approximation. And what we can write as a result of that, what we can write as a result of that is my current is my current density or let me you know write down go a f step further so my current density which is com composed of holes moving in this direction i can write this down as my charge times my doping charge times my doping and into the mobility of my carrier so into the mobility and multiplied by the field in this direction so multiplied by EY. So I am assuming that outside my depletion region or you know where my channel is, I can simply write down my current as a function of this uh, electric field Y and my electric field X is negligible, is negligible or is not contributing to the current condition out current conduction outside my depletion region. Okay, so now I can further you know, I can further expand on this and instead of writing uh, EY, since I'm, you know, interested in finding uh, the relationship with the voltage, I'll just say EY is equal to, is equal to derivative of my voltage in my Y direction. Okay, so this is fair as well. And now I to find out my total current, I need to integrate this as a function of X and as a function of Z. So my overall current is essentially an integral of this over, over x and over z. 
so I know that my width in the Z direction is capital Z and then my integral along my X direction then what I'm doing is I'm integrating along I'm integrating along this width of my channel and my width of my channel is essentially is essentially 2a minus two times this depletion width. So I have this depletion rate from the upper junction and this depletion rate also from the lower junction. And both of them are same because my um, my my device is symmetric uh, along the center and also I'm applying the same voltage on both these gates. So this thing is 2a minus two times this uh, depletion width with it, which is also a function of uh, voltage or i can in other terms i can write this width of my channel is essentially 2a minus time depletion width divided by a so now my current my current is essentially uh, integral of this uh, j y along d x and along dz which is essentially simplifies to j y into z into capital z multiplied by multiplied by the width of the channel which is two let me use the same color let me be faithful to the colors into two a one minus minus the depletion width divided by the half the channel channel width. So I can further substitute for this JY from this equation. So I can use this equation and substitute for JY. So this ID, this I essentially becomes equal to, equal to Q times my doping into my mobility into this, into this uh, dy, dv by dy. And then I get these other terms from here, which is z and multiplied by the channel width, which is 2a times one minus w by a. So now I, I see, you know, something interesting happening over here. So what I see is a voltage dependence on this side and it's there, it's a derivative of Y. So what I'll do is take this derivative of Y to my, uh, to my left hand side and then I'll integrate it over. So I, I'll say my I T and then a derivative of Y. So I'll integrate it over Y and Y is varying from zero to L. So it's into limits on this integration are from zero to L. And this is essentially equivalent to, is essentially equivalent to Q times N A. So all these things are constant, so they don't participate in the integral. In fact, two is constant as well. So let me write down two A, okay. And then the integral of, integral of one minus W over the voltage, over the voltage, all right? So as long as, and then the voltage is, as I'm varying from, so my Y is varying from, Y is varying from zero to L. At the same time, my voltage is going from my source voltage, which is grounded to V equal to VD at the drain side. So I'm going from Y from zero to L. So I'm going from Y from zero to L. And in terms of voltage, I'm going from zero to VD. So my limits of this integration are essentially limits of this integration are from zero to VD. So I just realized that there should be another negative sign over here. There should be another negative sign over here. And that's because this electric field is not a uh, derivative of uh, dv by dy, but it's a negative derivative of dv by dy. So there should have been a negative sign over, over from this, from carry over from this, which will carry over to the rest of the equation. So now if I look at this equation, what I understand is that as long as I can figure out how my depletion width depends upon the applied voltage, I can calculate my I as a function of 
voltage or as a function of drain voltage and i kind of already know that from my diode theory so i'm going to recall back from simple uh, diode theory so we know that our depletion width uh, in a diode it depends upon it depends upon the applied voltage using this uh, applied voltage using this formula where it's a uh, square root dependence on the built-in voltage minus the applied voltage and what is the applied voltage in this case? So if we we'll go back to again our this device, we see that I have a P N plus diode over here. So I have a I have a P N plus diode, and I'm applying a, a gate voltage V G on the N plus side, and then I'll assume that I have a voltage V over here on this uh, on this uh, at this point in the channel. So my V applied, which is my voltage uh, across the diode, this is essentially the voltage on my P side, which is uh, V minus the voltage on my gate side, on my N plus side, which is uh, VG. So this is my applied forward bias voltage, or you know, maybe reverse bias, but this is my applied voltage across this P N plus diode. So I substitute for that. So I substitute my V applied is essentially equal to V minus uh, VG in uh, this equation. So this equation turns to this. And then I also know that when I, when I have the condition for pinch off, so if this V applied is equal to the pinch off voltage, then my depletion width is equal to half of my total available channel width so my i know that my depletion width is essentially equal to a when i have pinch off voltage so i know these two relationship and i can you know i can divide this relationship of uh, w with a and i get uh, this relationship so v by a it depends upon the applied voltage it depends upon the applied voltage using the square root dependence so i can plug this uh, plug this uh, into this uh, equation so i have a square root dependence over here and then i have a constant term over here <clears throat> so when i integrate it over i get uh, this relationship so let me you know let me let's quickly verify this so i had a constant term so i get when i integrate it over i get uh, dependence on uh, vd from here and then I had a W by A term, so then I had uh, this W by A term, which had a square root dependence on uh, on my voltage. So when I integrate it over, I get uh, this term, which has a 3 to the power, which has a power dependence of 3 by half. So it has, from this term, I get uh, these two terms, which have a power dependence of uh, 3 half. Uh, based on the integral of, of this equation. So uh, from my constant term, I get this dependence on uh, linear dependence on VD. And then I get a power dependence, which is dependence upon uh, 3 half power of uh, my applied drain voltage. So I kind of make peace with myself that, you know, I'll get uh, this relationship when I integrate it over. And in the next video, we'll interpret this IV relationship and what it means uh, for the operation of this device.